In the middle of London's financial district, a group of aspiring young entrepreneurs gather for a chance to walk away with a prize fund of business products and services. But first, they must pitch their business ideas to our panel of judges. Welcome to the 2017 Young Startup Talent London Finals. After the previous two years, having been so successful in Croydon with past winners and finalist businesses prospering, this year Young Startup Talent have decided to expand their search to the entire London region. As a result, we received a large number of submissions from across the London region. But now it all comes down to our final five. Which one will go home with our prize fund of business products and services? Let's find out. Recap of the year so far. In June, our semi-finalists aged between 16 and 25 attended the Young Startup Talent Speed Networking event held at the NatWest offices in Bank, where they shared their business idea with the judges and sponsors who came from all across London. From the speed networking event, five finalists have since been chosen to pitch in front of our London judges at the NatWest building in Bishopsgate, London. The 2017 lineup includes Lorraine Nugent, Managing Director of Young Startup Talent and PR Specialist at Wildwood PR. As well as being one of the founding partners for Young Startup Talent, Lorraine also has a passion for business. With no shortage of expertise in the public relations world, Lorraine is a PR specialist at leading PR agency Wildwood PR. Matt Turner, CEO of Creative Pod Group. At just 20 years old, Matt started his own business, which has since led to him winning a number of awards. This entrepreneurial spirit inspired Matt to become one of the founding partners of Young Startup Talent, with a view to encourage and motivate young entrepreneurs to start their own businesses. Bill Morrow, serial entrepreneur and chairman and founder of Angel's Den. Recently been named the most influential person in alternative finance by City AM, Bill is a visionary who can cut through complexity and see what is really needed in fast-changing business and cultural environments. Simon Maddox, partner of Oadalian King. Simon has been a partner of Oadalian King since October 2005, joining the firm after leaving university in 1986 as a trainee accountant and studying for his ACCA qualification. Phil Hall, Regional Director for North and West London Business Banking, NatWest. Philip joined the bank 15 years ago in the Small Business Division, progressing from a Senior Business Manager in the City of London to Area Business Manager and then Area Director for the West End, where he started the hotels team. IB Benigo from Zootown. Zootown is a forward-thinking online platform that connects students from universities across London with employment opportunities. With more than 558,000 young students aged 18 to 24 in the UK facing unemployment, Zootown aims to tackle and change this forever. With all payments being taken online and paid directly to the student, Zootown aims to revolutionise the way students and employers find the jobs and support that they need. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ivy Benigo and I am the proud founder of Zootown. And for those who don't know, Zootown is a platform that connects students to employment opportunities across the whole of the UK. And once you sign up, um, you'll be able to find nannies, tutors and babysitters. So that's exactly what it's going to look like. It's and then it takes nice. you to you know, a really simplified, quick and easy process where you're able to book someone. And they're not paid instantly. They're paid once you approve the job. So once the parent um, is happy with everything that's gone on, they'll be able to press confirm and the student will receive their pay immediately. That's so nice. it's a very you know, simplified way of doing things. It works for the students. Students want their money quickly. You know, I had this crazy idea, I didn't know how exactly I was going to do it, but I just tried, I put everything into it, and this is a really good product. I think it can do more with your experience. I don't know everything, I'm just really here to push this platform to the next level. So, if you have any questions? Can I 
Yep. Yes. So just in terms of the general principle yep. of it all, so I get how it all works and, yep. and the interface looks brilliant by the way, I really Thank like it. Thank you very much. So in terms of trusting my child yes. with a random stranger, talk me through the research you've done on that and what percentage of parents roughly would hand their child to a stranger. You can't just go on because you want to. You go on because you have one year or more experience, you've got two references, you've got a DBS and a first aid check if you're a babysitter. So all those... So they're optional? No, they're not optional, they're mandatory. You need them. And what's really weird is that my competitors haven't made that a priority. You don't need that to sign up, which says that there is a market out there that doesn't really need all these security mm. procedures put in place. But because I don't want to take that risk and I want my customers to trust this platform, you know, I don't want them to think that it's just something that anyone has signed up to. These are students who are passionate and experienced and fully vetted. I get like hiring a student yeah. to dig my garden over, <laughs> but to look after the heir to my empire, I need more than just a student, in my opinion. No, but you look at most babysitters, they're 14, 15, 16 yeah. year old kids. This is like taking it up to another level, mm. so you can vet them, they've actually got a social exactly. media profile. What's the stop? So you build this community, you have a fun day, yeah. um, 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 Nancy meets little Johnny and looks after him. Mm. Why would they bother coming back to the platform again? Why don't they just keep Nancy and mm. cut you out of the loop? Well, I've done this before. <laughs> I was with an agency and um, you know, the parents, I was with them for such a long time, there wasn't, well, the parents felt there wasn't a need to, you know, pay a placement fee again and again every time they booked myself. So it does happen, and I think it will happen. Features that I've incorporated into the website will sort of reduce it. We have something called the Zoo Town Award. Now, when a parent writes in to let myself know that someone's done an amazing job, they will get rewarded a £50 voucher, for example. So incentivising um, these areas of the website will make the student think twice about leaving because they're not only getting paid straight away, but there's a chance that they can you know, get more money by doing a great job. Now, that also helps them to maintain a high level you know, um, high standard when they are actually performing their duties. With, with the app development, so it's looking good. So it's great. Have, mm. how Thank you. have you tested it? Yes, yeah. I'm still testing at the moment every day. I should be finished by mid-August. It's been a great joy. It's really fun, um, especially seeing something on a piece of paper come to life. Um, I, you know, test with parents, a few parents as well, just to see what they think. Yeah, as well as the students as well. So my first student social would be in September, which is one of the main features. And um, because I won't be able to go to all the universities because it's really expensive to do, but there are great ways to advertise. So pulling like flyers in their freshers goodie bags, which everyone looks at, and um, also putting a discount voucher for the first event. So that should create a buzz. And um, I'm using careers fairs. Careers fairs, yeah. Mm -hmm. What I would do is a marketing mm -hmm. campaign. So I would do like a, a child safety or an internet safety awareness course okay. that you'd go into schools and you'd mm -hmm. go and deliver it to the kids. That's so cool. And then you'd hand out literature that those kids would take home. And that whole scheme and process around internet safety or Trojan whatever it horse. is. Trojan horse it. Mm -hmm. it's all powered, Pretend you care about the kids. All powered by <laughs> Zoo Town. You know, so then you're looking ethical. They'll open their doors to you. Okay. And targeted Facebook advertising yeah, to that. Yeah, that as well. Particular. Definitely will be. When's the ice cream van going out? Um, South Kensington. <laughs> Definitely passing all of your houses. Right. Um, I mean, we're not passing your houses. Um, I'm joking. Definitely the affluent areas first. Yeah. And then targeting. You won't be, you won't be passing my house then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the affluent areas first, and then working around um, the outside of like South East London, East London. West London. Um, it's going to be I guess it's really maybe targeting day. the city as well. Like a bank, they have mm -hmm. lots of employees that actually that all possibly have kids that yeah. they need to. Try that as well. Actually, stapled some biscuits to some flyers. Found some hungry parents. It, it did work though. It did. It did really <laughs> work. Okay. So definitely. You stapled biscuits to flyers. Uh, yeah. You'll be surprised if you hand out a flyer. They're not interested. Yeah. Have a biscuit on it. They'll take it. Like a digestive no, no, biscuit. No, it's it's a packet, a packet of biscuits. Oh, see, yeah. A packet of biscuits, <laughs> not just a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, that's it. Great. Well, yeah, that's okay. it. Thank you. Well, well, done. Done. well done. Thank you. George Foster and Leon Watson, Savvy. Savvy is a platform looking to disrupt the outdated loyalty industry. Savvy replaces the traditional reward scheme with an app that allows users to accumulate loyalty points automatically when they spend through their mobile phones or using debit or credit cards. Mobile and contactless payments have grown at an 80% compound annual growth rate and many experts predict the future of payment technology to be completely through your mobile phone. Despite such innovations in payment technology, the loyalty market has remained significantly stagnant, with 86% of the UK's population still carrying at least one physical loyalty card. Savvy is a mobile app that allows users to add all of their existing loyalty cards to our mobile app. Savvy users then scan in their current debit or credit cards to the mobile app. Savvy's API reads and recognises the transactions so it can automatically allocate points to the corresponding loyalty scheme as soon as they make the purchase. So as Savvy knows that um, your transactional data, it's able to put this information through a machine learning process where it's able to provide bespoke promotions uh, on the app. And we call this part of the app the marketplace. Now the way this works is, um, take for example Joe, who's a construction worker, and he has to get up really early. Uh, and at lunchtime, he likes to have a coffee, and Savvy knows this because um, of the transactional data. He's able to be fed through um, the machine learning uh, process and therefore understands that Joe likes coffee at lunchtime. At about 11 o'clock, uh, Savvy pings Joe a message saying, hey Joe, it's nearly lunchtime. How about you enjoy coffee for 50% off today? It's only a two minute walk away. Now this brings benefit to the user, obviously, by being uh, discounted offers, but also to the business because um, these businesses are able to promote and push these notifications at any time of the day. Therefore, they're able to reach out to nearby users who um, can come into their store during off-peak dining hours of the uh, restaurant or uh, store. Our strategy is we're trying to really uh, perfect our product before we start spending money on marketing and advertising. So we've come to Young Startup Talent today for hopefully for the, for the funding but more importantly for the mentorship and the skills such as marketing and PR um, to really help take our business to the next level. Thank yeah, you very thanks. much for listening and providing us with this opportunity. Are there any questions? Okay, so, so, yep. yeah. okay. so again, you know, really good, good presentation, really like, like the pack, so, so well done. I think like most of the, the best ideas, you can't quite believe it hasn't been done already. <laughs> yeah. Um, so who owns the data? We, we own the data. So why would, um, why would Tesco's, if you tap them up, why, yeah. would, why would they say, go on the chaps, have our store card, have all of our data, have everything? Oh, well, so we, Tesco, for Tesco's it'd be completely free. Tesco's would be able to sort of have this autonomy. We'd give them the data for free as well. So we're why? Not, not, That's the value. Charge them. They're a multi-billion dollar business. Charge them for the data. Yeah, mm -hmm. the insight. You know, retailers want to know what shop you've been into yeah, before yeah. and what shop you're going to afterwards and how long you've spent so, in there. Yeah, that's going to be the tipping point, isn't it? Because actually Tesco's would just say, no thanks lads, because actually our data is the best in the world. So you'd struggle to get them on there if you didn't give it to them. Yeah. But to your point, actually data is the way you monetize the whole thing. We were sort of saying that we were going to say that we're leveraging our data. We're going to give the data for free if we get point of sale advertising. So in Tesco, when you go to pay, have you downloaded the Savvy app, collect your points automatically? I so would give them the first 100 transactions for free. Right. right. And then I would charge them per thousand. Yeah, but Tesco's are no go for them. So if you're 18 month old, you'll be getting nappy vouchers coming out of your ears. Whereas yeah. I've so I, yeah. I, think, I think you guys are doing brilliantly because uh, we have a fintech club that um, um, finances fintech and um, you've doubled the valuation of your business by yeah. mentioning machine learning twice. Yeah, and um, you've been prompted to say big data. So guess what? You've doubled the value <laughs> of your business yet again. All we need, all we need is um, artificial intelligence and some blockchain, and you guys are yeah, like multi-millionaires. <laughs> multi have you got Costa and Prezzo? And we haven't got, no. we've got Prezzo, I haven't got Costa. Uh, so if we say we're approaching someone like Costa, our strategy for that is that will be a physical card, as you were saying, you sort of click on it and scan it. Nice and then it. we get to a level, we're saying to Costa, 100,000 times people are doing this with you. The next stage is that it's automatic from their card, rather than them having to click on Costa. Well, the nice thing about Costa is they're owned by Whitbreads. 
So you've got Premier Inn, you've got... Yeah, so why cool. wouldn't Costa yeah. embrace yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's yeah. what yeah, it just seems. So if they didn't want to like throw their name around with... I don't, that's sort of the only yeah. thing we can think Dodgy of. startup. Yeah. <laughs> We're sort of trying to gain credibility before yeah. we can approach them. But you've them. got, because how many brands have you got on there at the moment? We've got, I think it's 70. Yeah. It's bloody good they're going. They're quite big brands, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so we had to, so for example, Bella Italia, we had to go into the local level and then sort of get referred up to like a regional level. And, yeah. and you got them all signed up? Yeah, yeah. But who, who did the legals? This is huge, I mean, to get them signed up. Yeah, no, well, it's, it's sort of for the, for the beta, for the beta testing in, yeah. in Nottingham, yeah. Because essentially we're... Who did the legal? They, they haven't signed a contract, so they've agreed to... Because the beta testing is the marketplace. Oh, yeah, it's just half the state. value. So the, they just said, yes, we'll do it. And yeah, yeah. Have you got evidence to, of that? Yeah, 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 we can, you can so go and use it in Ascotalia now, in Nottingham. Yeah. And the app is available to download? Yeah, 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 and you just savvy, and it was the first yeah. one. That and you've got out. Android as well. Android yeah. as well, yeah, both native on both platforms. <laughs> Why do you need us then? So we're yeah. hoping, so, um, because we, we're trying to make the perfect product at the moment, yeah. we sort of come to you for, like, obviously your expertise in sort of PR and marketing and network, um, to sort of help our business grow fast enough that we will be able to solidify a market position. We don't, we don't want to sort of slowly or organically grow and then people copy it and the market comes really diluted. Um, we're hoping to sort of scale fast, yeah. um, so that sort of our main barrier entry will be our network effects and our brand, um, and sort of to benefit from them, we'd need we'd need your help to, to grow I, fast enough. And, and are you getting lots of tax advice? I mean, research and development is massive. Um, yeah, our tax, tax credits, credits yeah. tax breaks. Really. Yeah, I sort of the university sort of helping us quite a bit with it yeah. as well um, in terms of that means no. <laughs> 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 we should, yeah, we probably should be getting more as well. Well, they've only spent 5k. Hmm? They've only they spent 5k, <laughs> so it's like, yeah. But well, time, you, you can still get that. tax <laughs> like credits on time. You have a time comes out of the say that. You cannot. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, okay. Tade, Federo and Kimberly Moyo from Creator Match. Creative Match is an ideas and skills matching platform exclusively for university students. It connects students with ideas with the students that have the willingness and expertise to contribute effectively in order to establish founding teams. My name is Kimberly and this is my business partner Tade and together we're the founders of Creative Match, a skills and ideas matching platform exclusively for university students. Some of the benefits of the Creative Match uh, platform for institutions is that they will be engaging in entrepreneurial activity and a lot of employers now look for graduates that are commercially aware that have participated in entrepreneurial activity. So when they subscribe to the Creative Match platform, they're also engaging in what employers look for in graduates. And we also have the Creative Match alumni network where um, where students that have graduated from university can mentor other um, students on the platform and give them advice and, 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 and guidance on their projects and ideas. We will charge universities £9,000 for a 12-month subscription to the Creative Match platform for all of their students. For 9,000, institutions uh, gain a dedicated account manager who will oversee the onboarding, the monitoring and the renewal of the Creative Match platform. We hope that YST will be able to pioneer um, a platform that potentially could churn out some of the big, biggest businesses of the future. With Creative Match, it, it starts, starts here. here. Thank you for listening, and we're open thank for you. questions. Okay, thank you, guys. Okay. Have you? How you, you said you wanted to target ten universities for the first yeah. year? How many universities have you spoken to so far, and what's their feedback on their thoughts and the costs? So we've spoken to King's College, we've spoken to uh, Sussex University. So those so are your two universities, aren't they? Yeah. <coughs> so what about other universities? That Bucking, you Buckingham University, because uh, they have a, they're really engaged in uh, entre entrepreneurial activity at Buckingham University. They have a whole um, degree that's um, designed about, that is designed around students starting up their own 
businesses and uh, really focusing on that. So we've spoken to um, Nigel Adams, who's the head of um, enterprise there at Buckingham University. So yeah, we've received really good feedback. Um, so a lot of the universities we've spoken to, they invest a lot of money into the, into the value that their students get. And what we have found is that institutions are competing, are trying to better themselves, are trying to you know, uh, invest in, in things that will attract students. So by having a platform like Creati Match, where students can connect and collaborate with others, they're becoming more attractive. A student might um, select a university based on you know, the extracurric extracurricular um, activities that the university has invested in. I think it's quite a straightforward business to understand, and I can see how it will work. I think there might be more interesting spin-offs off the back of it that can really 100%. drive something yeah. that... Yeah. But we, I think the main, the, the reason why we started this business um, at, at, from the from the from the get go is we've we've experienced this ourselves from try, when trying to start a business. It's very hard to find the right team. You mm. can have a great idea, but you can't really. Sometimes you don't have the resources or even know the people to join that team. Mm. And we are basically creating a, a solution to a problem. And and obviously, as we as we become successful in that arena, then we can start moving into it, investing yeah. into into that. And business. alternatively, there's so many people that have got the skills, not just coding, but perhaps they're artistic and they actually want to contribute the skills that they have in a more meaningful way, but they just yep. don't know how to. They don't have that community where they can, where, where they can do that. But w when the site's up and running, say I, I'm a student, I log on, etc., and say I want to be part of this project or I've got this idea, yeah. I'm then dependent on students around the country or the world to <laughs> engage with that. Yeah. Um, but is there anyone kind of monitoring sort of... Getting that activity. Getting yeah, the impetus like, and the enthusiasm. The marketing of that project. If I signed up to a dating site and there's no women on the site, it's not a very good return on investment for my money, is it? Mm. Yeah. So if I'm putting a project out there because I want to get stuff going, you've got to ensure that there's enough people and skill set and of traction course. So the, 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 I think the most unique thing about um, Creative Match is that users are not limited to posting just ideas. You can toggle between different functions. So if you, you can you can decide that you've got an idea that you know you want people to get involved in, and alternatively alternatively you can decide that you also want to be a part of other ideas. So our users get that two way experience. You're you're also a creative, but you're also a doer, and you can you can toggle between two functions. So, so it's so not literally when you sign up, you're signing up as somebody who's just posting an idea. One of the things I want to ask about is. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's cool, and it's lovely to be able to toggle, always yeah. good to toggle. But surely, if I had a, an amazing business idea, I'm not going to tell everyone about it. Yeah. You, um, that, that's, that's true, but the, the, the um, so we, we, the, 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 what we're trying to create with the platform is idea sharing, right? So because an idea is only idea without, an idea is only an, uh, is only an idea without execution. So um, it, it, you, you need to take it to that next level. What we encourage all, um, all users when they sign up to the platform is to share, our, share the idea at a very high level. Don't go into detail about your specifics or you know, anything too yep. detailed. It's, we just keep it very high level. So what the product is that you're working. So if you're- Love it, yeah, cool. Yeah. So the university's go back in October, so you're really, planning for next year, aren't you? Because it should be marketing now. More yes, or less, yeah, I yeah. Take it. Yep. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why we want to, we really want to create um, a lot of brand awareness before we actually launch officially. Right. We want to um, go to all the freshest fairs, all of the open days, get um, some students on board firstly, build that traction as you were talking about, Matt, Great. and then launch um, to the university. Great. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Well done. Diana Florescu, Local Spoon. Local Spoon is a web application for last minute price drops on independent restaurants in central London. Their innovation is to merge the online last minute services with the offline casual dining. The app is using geolocation targeting to only promote offers at tables that would otherwise remain empty, thus representing an opportunity for the business to reduce waste and reach a wider market. My name is Nala Floresco and I'm the co-founder of Local Spoon. It's an online platform which connects independent restaurants and local buyers like yourself and myself using real-time discounts, surplus food and geolocation targeting. We are now sitting in front of you at, at the stage of launching a fully functional MVP to market with 10 restaurants on board, 
three universities sign up, including ISEC organization, which is ready to pilot the application with 5,000 students just in London. Now, I almost hear you thinking, um, hasn't been done before. Well, obviously we have Groupon, uh, a big giant on this side, and really small companies on the other side, like Regal, City Mount, you've probably never heard before. But Local Spoon is completely different from both sides, and that's because we have a dynamic business approach at creating these rear offers. We work with restaurants to create them when they have unfilled capacity, they have tables that otherwise will remain empty, and also a lot of food would go to waste. It's a free service for Diana and myself, yourself, and a pay service for restaurants. As we grow the business, we provide three marketing packages tailored to our, need, to our customer needs, and also additional revenue will come from in-app advertising, analytics, and data. We are two co-founders with experience in digital marketing and sales. Uh, myself, I launched several apps and games to market, and I'm working for Startup Bootcamp as a marketing specialist, helping other startups grow. My co-founder is working uh, in business development for one of the largest e-commerce platform in the world. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yep. It's a bit of habit, doesn't it? Very good, well done. Thank you. Good presentation, it's not easy to stand there. You did a, did a really good job. So, just got two, two questions really. So, sure. my understanding of how it works is that I can be walking down the street with my wife and kids and trying to work out which restaurant we want to go to. Sure. And with the location software, you, you ping me an offer from the local Italian, I get an offer from the local Chinese, and we decide which one we want to go to. Mm -hmm. Am I right in thinking though that I pay you? Uh, yes, so I forgot to mention we are empowered by PayPal, so mm. all the uh, all the users are using Local Spoon. They can pay directly on the app. When I read in detail the business plan, it was more aimed at dining in than takeaways. Yes, so we encourage people to actually dine in. We like to establish the relationship between restaurants and customers, and the main dif uh, key differentiator is actually creating loyalty for these restaurants. Mm -hmm. okay. So what happens we if, allow I, them if I get to the restaurant and I change my mind and I want a special rather than the pizza that I prepaid? So I can't right. change my mind. You're, if you, no, I mean you would ask me probably for a refund. You can still buy whatever you want from the restaurant, but won't be in discount at the stage. Usually they create offers. So these offers are very dynamic. They have a dashboard. They log in. It's a web app. They can put offers anything they want. It doesn't have to be a specific type of dish. Could be things like any type of pizza you want. That will be forty percent between two and four. Or three courses for ninety exactly. five. And you can so pizza. we yeah, exactly okay. we're testing right now different offers. Okay. Uh, some restaurants prefer buy one get one free. Obviously, this also increases like variety. Taste card. Yeah. Yes. And um, one of the big problems that um, Groupon had was that it was a great idea and everybody um, got on board and it was really, really cool. But then they're starting to come back down again. Mm -hmm. and the reason, as I'm sure you know, that they're starting to come back down is that restaurants, people were going into restaurants going, well, I want 40% off now. Yes. And they were going, well, no, no, you, you, can't, you can't have that now. You know, that, kind of, that period's over because we were trying to get loyal with you. Sure. How do you overcome that Groupon effect? Because it's, it's almost in its knees now, Groupon. So yeah, so Groupon, um, this kind of voucher website, there are clones, there are hundreds, right? It's not just Groupon. They manufacture most of these deals weeks in advance, and Groupon is just one time transaction, right? There's no way to increase loyalty or to encourage loyalty. The sales promotion is just one tiny thing for, for Local Spoon, and we actually want to, inc to actually have a relationship with you. You are not just going there, you are not just, you know, one, it's not one time transaction. We want to go be be beyond that, and that's the reward system. That's why we want you know basically to encourage the relationship between that between restaurants and the other side. Great. So how are you going to kind of penetrate the market? I mean, me and my friends, if I want to go out to eat, I go on TripAdvisor mm -hmm. and do a bit of research, and every time it's a winner. You know, how are you going to reach me in your marketing? I think that's I a very good question. So we have a very localized approach. We started with uh, City of Westminster with the borough. We have roughly 136,000 students there and over 270 uh, restaurants. What we see in the cash flow, I'm just aiming to reach 40% of the students by, by uh, the next 12 months and at least 60% of restaurants. The way we've been doing so far, to be honest, probably is not very scalable, but we're just pounding the pavement door to door only to independent restaurants and that's purely because we want to create variety um, and uh, it's much easier to be hands-on with these customers rather than going for retail business or franchise where obviously you probably realize um, I'm also a student I graduated myself just recently our key target are Millennials 
So uh, right now, uh, even, even when we got the lowest people vote, was purely because people resonated with the idea. They are young. They like this kind of gamified rewards, and they also want to save money and you know in, have a wide variety as well. I hope that answered the question. Why would you aim at the student market? Because they're poor as church mice. Why yep. don't you, um, um, Lorraine? So that's. Super vintage. That's just exactly. That's a very good question. That's just in our B check segment because we need to start somewhere. If and if that's easier to test, that's great. Most of our offers are usually on a five to seven pounds. Most of them will probably be more expensive if we're talking about two course meal. The next and probably the most profitable uh, segment will be companies. So we want to provide local spoon as a sort of package for employees, tapping into all you know companies like banking as well, <coughs> people that are eating out on a daily basis because they can't be bothered to cook sure. or they just need to go at lunchtime and instead of paying 15 pounds you can pay 10 pounds, right? Yeah. So that will be the next segment. Yeah. Great. Good. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Excellent. Excellent. Well done. Well done. Thank, Thank you very much. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Aftab Alum and Akram Alum from EcoSmart. The EcoSmart is the UK's first on-demand, eco-friendly mobile car wash app. Customers can request and pay for all services on their app, website and over the phone. Using their eco-friendly solution with a bespoke nano-spraying technology and versatile branded smart cars, they provide their services to customers in London. The EcoSmart is the UK's first on-demand car wash app. We are fully mobile, 100% eco-friendly. We use 93% less water than the average car wash. Uh, this ensures that there are no water splashes, no water runoffs. Being self-contained, our fully branded smart cars are able to travel without the limit of water and power. Within the first three months of our beta testing, we've launched two branded smart cars and one van, um, servicing our London area of Canary Wharf, Stratford and City. With your investment into our business, we can fund our marketing team to help, to help market our brand for a wider audience. We cover two ranges, online marketing and offline marketing. Online marketing consists of social media, Facebook, Instagram, paid advertisements on there to fly off Twitter. Our future plans is to expand in Malaysia, Dubai, where there is major water restrictions. Also meeting potential investors within the UK. Franchise opportunities will also be available for young startups who are looking for a brighter future. Market on a bigger scale, billboards, digital billboards, buses, black taxis. Currently we've researched on Eco, London's new Eco cabs. We'd like to have a full wrap on there. So thank you very much for listening to us. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy. So, thank you guys. We love all the branding, the marketing behind you. I think that's fantastic. You've clearly done a great job of of actually bringing the product here, that looks, looks pretty good too. So just to bring it back to the nuts and bolts of it, so if I was based in this building, and I think, you know, my car's a bit dirty and needs a bit of a clean, yes. I would have to be at the car for you to wash it. If it's an in and out service, we have four packages currently. One is an exterior wash with wax. Uh, the second is an interior with wax and uh, hoover. So for in and outs, you will have to give us permission. Mm -hmm. And we'll do it. we have a. But you do not always have to be at the car because we use on our app we have a garage software where you add all the cars you have. Whether you have three cars, all the way to twenty cars, you add them all in there. The registration number, the car that you select, will have a registration number. When we enter the car park, we will look for your registration number, which will identify your car. Using the app, our admin app will send you a picture confirming that's your car. Once you've confirmed that's your car, we'll then carry on the service. We also, if you have time at the end, you could go through the app. Uh, how long are you saying to your customers that you'll be before your on our app we have two types we have a scheduling and on demand if you choose the scheduling you can choose exactly what time you want it um, our staff will be with you within that time if you choose the on demand which is normally we give it a 20 minutes to 30 minutes gap time frame uh, that assures that we get there before time because we always like to be on time Especially state agents, we're working with state agents, we know how it is. They have viewing after viewing after viewing, and they all have white cars for some reason, I don't know why. So they all want their cars clean. 
I like the idea, I think it's great, but so if, if it's popular, it's going to grow, how, to are, you, how are you going to keep up with to be demand? Honest, uh, how are you going to we, we get have, so many cars? We have made a deal with uh, Mercedes-Benz right. where we will get cars uh, branding them. So a car is not an issue, staff is not an issue. As we have eight staff, we can always uh, bring them up full time. The full yeah, I don't see time. the car wash staff being a problem, there's loads of them. When you go into Sainsbury's, it's full of them. <coughs> you know, washing the cars and stuff. Yeah, yeah, well there is. But with our brand, they're, they're just car washers. How many they're cars can you clean in one day? Uh, 15 cars max. Okay. So this is a brilliant idea. What's to stop somebody else moving into the marketplace and we killing are. you? Yep, so we're we are fully trademarked. We're yeah, patent depending. Our app is actually trademarked under section nine, which is um, an app software trademark. Yeah. And um, our solution is manufactured by us. Uh, we've got investments. We've got investments. Um, we're already looking to expand, but we don't want to run before we can walk. That, What's your investor cost. bringing to the party apart from cash? Are they bringing anything else? Yes, they have really good knowledge about uh, really big clientels. Uh, clientels. We've got really big, big clientels, such as invest other investors that invest in other companies, such as Tesco, Sainsbury's. Um, our future plan is actually to get the products into retail. That's how we'll make our money. That's what that diagram was about. Yeah. Just an idea which we were thinking, hey, we've got the product, we've got the cloth. Why not get it in Sainsbury's? Why not get it in Tesco? Where someone can just be fueling the car, bird, bird dropping, grab a kit. It's called a kit, a starter kit, with a little bit of solution, smaller than that. At the, yeah, smaller than that. Just a little spray with a couple of cloths, tire shine. People like these things. Yeah, and also with our current uh, marketing budget, word or verbal word, mouth of word, is very useful for us. You know your numbers that you said about 15 cars. Um, but I get what you're saying about yeah. You know, across the day there would be an average of like 130 pound profit per vehicle on the road. Yes. But if you were doing 90 pound, like if you did 15, yeah, yeah. 90 pound washes, yeah, that takes about two hours. So. Well, so, right. so you do seven of them a day. Yeah. So you might double. So that's why if you look at your the cash flow, all the it's figures bit, at the yeah. end is a bit because of what is I've. I've you know, is equal to 13 times. You know, what I like about your cash flow is actually realistic yeah, to yeah. the market. The most yeah, honestly, it's not like drag that. across divide by 12 bollocks. It's pr it's proper. So, like <laughs> in the winter, you dip. In the summer, you go. It's, someone's yeah. actually put their brain yeah. on the thought. In the second year, that was in, that was in my little course that I did. But yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. It's right. 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 Yet another successful year has come to a close, but which young entrepreneur will walk away with our prize fund of business products and services? The fate of their businesses now lies in the hands of the judges. Young Startup Talent would like to thank all the sponsors and supporters for their support and look forward to working with the next set of entrepreneurs in 2018. All of those who have made it through the process have the support and business network to make their business a success. We look forward to keeping in contact and up to date with their progress as they grow throughout the year. To find out more about Young Startup Talent, the sponsors involved and to follow the progress of entrepreneurs past and present, visit youngstartuptalent.co.uk. Hi, my name is Ben Chubb, National Partnerships Manager for NatWest Business Banking and we're really pleased to be supporting young startup talent today here in London and over the past couple of years supporting young budding entrepreneurs in their journey as they hope to grow their businesses and really take them off in the future.